So what is head voice and chest voice and how do you find these registers in your voice to help you become a better singer? I'm going to work on that today with you. Welcome to Sync Geek. Hello singers and welcome to another geeky video. My name is Ronya Peterson and as always I'm here to geek out on your voice. The goal today is to help you understand how the registers that we call the chest voice and the head voice, how they work, both how they feel like and how they sound like. Now a register is a range of notes that has the same tone quality to it. So for example, the chest voice, ah, same quality of tone to it. And the head voice, Later in this video, I'm going to give you four steps that you can go through to find these registers in your voice and so that you can start navigating. Now, what do I mean by navigating? Well, it is so that when you hear people sing really nicely and smoothly from a high place to a lower place or vice versa, it's not because they were born without registers. It's because they worked very hard at navigating them, at changing without people noticing. So they can start from a, a lower note and go smooth up to a higher note. It's because they're navigating and they know how it feels in the two registers. So they can go, for example, like this. Ah, without any changes or cracks. You can also do it intentionally with intention, like with a yodel. Yeah, oh, oh, from chest to head. Um, so that's some of the things you can do. But before you get to navigating your registers, first you need to know, well, where is the chest voice and the head voice in your voice? So what are they? <laughs> Sound-wise, as you heard earlier, the chest voice and the head voice, they have different qualities to it. The chest voice, which is also called the M1 registers, it has a fuller tone and it's usually where most people speak. Uh, the chest voice, it got its name because of the fact that when you put your hand here and you sing in chest voice, uh, you can feel a vibration. Try it with me. Uh, hello. Yeah, especially if you sing something very low, you can really feel the chest voice here. Uh, in the olden days, they actually thought that you were projecting and singing from your chest. Uh, but today we know that your resonators are your skull and your throat and they were projecting from here. So this is actually what we call sympathetic vibration. It's trail off vibration from your resonators that you can feel in your chest. So that's your chest voice. The head voice is also known as the register M2. And the tone of the head voice is less full than the chest voice. And if you put your hand here again, like you did with the chest voice, and you now engage the head voice, you won't really feel any vibration anymore. If you go, Ooh, I'm not feeling any chest vibration anymore. A lot of feel, people, they will feel the sort of pinging uh, in their head uh, when they sing in head voice. And even a lot of people, if they put their hand at the back of their neck, they can feel some vibration. not as strong as the chest voice though so don't feel so bad if you can't feel it just engage the sound if you're not sure how to do the head voice you can imitate the sound of an owl or you can make the sound of a siren that's also a head voice or you can do my favorite which is just talk to your pet most of us we use head voice where you go like um who's the greatest yes you're so cute i love you that's also your head voice. I personally catch myself uh, sounding like that all the time when I talk to my family dog, Sheba. So try that one out. That might also help you with your head voice. Now to understand the navigation of the chest voice and the head voice, we're going to do some more geeking out on the anatomy of the voice. But as always, if you're excited to get started with the exercises and if you already know uh, the anatomy of the voice, that's totally cool. And the exercises or the four steps to, to help you find the head voice and the chest voice, they are at this time. So for those of you guys who really wanted to get into the nitty gritty of how the voice works with chest voice and head voice, here is the explanation. So when we create chest voice, it is created differently than the head voice. When we sing in chest voice, the whole vocal fold, this is one vocal fold and another vocal fold, they vibrate together, the whole of the vocal fold. But 
when you sing in head voice, only the edges of the vocal folds vibrate. So only, we call them the ligaments. Only the ligaments vibrate. So here's the ligaments, it's the full vocal folds, yeah? And so now you can also see why there is a fuller tone to your chest voice because the chest voice has more mass engaged with creating the sound compared to the head voice which only has the ligaments. So now I know you must be wondering, well, can I just engage the full vocal fold as high as I want? Can I just sing in chest voice with this full vocal fold as high as I want? Unfortunately not. There is this muscle inside each of your two vocal folds. If you look at this rubber band, and there's like these two vocal folds. There's this muscle inside called the TA muscle, the thyroarythenoid muscle. And what this muscle is responsible for doing is shortening your vocal folds to create lower pitches. So it starts like this and then it contracts. It goes, ah, ah, that's what the thyroarythenoid muscle does. To create higher pitches in your voice, there is another muscle involved called the CT or the quicker thyroid muscle. And that is the guy that is in charge of stretching your vocal folds, stretching it. So the TA muscle is in charge of contracting your vocal folds and the CT muscle stretches the vocal folds. Now, as long as you have some contraction inside the vocal folds from the TA muscles, you have some chest voice. But this guy is going to contract less and less and less and less. And at some point to sing higher, this guy has to take over. And for him to take over the TA muscle, they will completely relax. And that's when you are in head voice. That's when you have stretched. So you can see it's a sort of symbiotic relationship between the TA muscles contracting and then relaxing and contracting a little less. And then the CT muscle stretching the vocal folds further. Now, if you have a quick, abrupt break right now, it's probably because this guy is contracting less, contracting less, and then uh, like he gives completely out and this guy takes over. But right here, where this guy can sort of stop contracting as much, and this guy starts taking over, there is this place where they can learn to work together. And when they're working together, that's when you have that seamless break. Right? That makes sense. So instead of making these two muscle groups work against each other, you need to start learning to have them work together and you can practice that. I hope you're still with me, Singing Geeks. And if you are, great job getting to know your voice and getting to know how you create higher and lower pitches. You can really use this knowledge in navigating your registers. Now let's get to those four steps that you can use to finding your chest voice and your head voice and navigate your registers. So our goal with these four steps is to map out where does your chest voice stop, your head voice start, and more importantly, on what notes here in the passaggio, as we call it, the break, do you have the chance to actually choose if you want to use chest voice or head voice. Personally, I have my uh, register uh, mix pretty much mapped out so that I can anticipate when I'm singing a song and I can choose what register I want to use here in the passaggio. I want to get you there too. So let's get started with the four steps that you can take to find your chest voice and your head voice. Step one, get comfortable with your head voice. If you weren't able to engage the head voice earlier, I have a card right here that you can click that will help you uh, find your head voice. Now, uh, the reason that we want to make the head voice strong is because most of us, we have a pretty strong chest voice. We speak using the chest voice every day. But for the head voice, if it's not very strong, you don't use it very often, how can you navigate with this guy so much strong and so dominating? So you gotta get this guy, the CT muscles, the head voice, you gotta give them a chance. So practice that head voice. Step two, get comfortable with your passaggio, your break, where you're going from head voice to chest voice or chest voice to head voice, get comfortable with that. A lot of people are not comfortable with it at all and they avoid it. And how can you get to know it if you're not spending some time there? So do some slides where you're going from low to high or high to low and you really feel that switch between the head voice to the chest voice. You can go, ah, uh, right there, right? You're feeling that break. Try breaking it later or earlier. Just have fun with it, get to know it. Step number three. So in this step, you're going to map out your voice. So I want you to go to this video on the link right here. It's called Find Your Vocal Range. I will also link to it in the description below. And in this video, I want you to go to the second part of the video where it goes up. And you will see on the screen, you will see a letter and a number. 
And I want you to sing along step by step with this until you feel your chest voice stops and your head voice starts. And I want you to note that down. Come like most of the time for girls, it's somewhere around uh, where it says A4 to C5. And for guys, it's usually around uh, D4 to F5. And you will also find that some of the notes you can do both. And that is great. That is really great. Uh, if you find those notes, also mark them down too. Step number four, sing a song that has chest voice and head voice. For the guys, I recommend that you do Apologize by One Republic. I'll link to it in the description. And the same for the girls, I recommend that you do Everybody by Ingrid Michaelson. So go there, listen to the song, and hear when they sing chest voice and hear when they sing head voice so that you can anticipate doing it. And then have fun singing it. That's why we sing, right? We like to sing songs. Uh, vocal exercises are great, but we want to sing the songs. So practice with a song. This is a big and rather complicated topic that we cover today. So if you have any questions, please, please, please do not be shy. Ask them in the comments below. I love to geek out on this. It really makes my day. So just ask away. I'm going to love it. And if you want some vocal exercises to practice your chest voice and your head voice, they are right here in this playlist. And if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to Sync Geek right here. Join us every week as we continue to geek out on your voice to create the sound that you want.